This is the European edition of Breaking Banks, the world's number one fintech podcast and radio show. We bring you the European unicorn startups, founders, regulators, and leaders innovating the rapidly evolving fintech scene today. A truly localized podcast with both English and local language content with some of the world's most well-known hosts and influencers in the fintech sector globally. Join us every week as we explore what makes the European Union a phenomenal proving ground for many of the fastest growing fintech plays in the world today. Okay, let's roll. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Breaking Banks Europe. And my name is Matteo Rizzi. I am the executive producer of the show. This is show number 173. Seems uh, like uh, the old age we started recording the podcast, the po- this podcast. And today we have a very special episode. We are here to talk the Inclusive Fintech Forum in Kigali, 20 to the 22nd of June. And I'm here with the two leaders of this show, Nick Barigie, the CEO of Randa Finance. Nick, very welcome to Breaking Banks Europe. Thank you for having me, Matteo. And with Sopnandu Mohanty, Chairman of the Board of Elevandi. Sop, my friend, welcome back. Hi, good to be back with you. <laughs> So, guys, let's start a little bit with this uh, star alignment uh, introduction. Let's talk a little bit about your organization and your role. And let's start with Nick for a couple of minutes, please. So I'm called Nick Varige. I'm the CEO of Rwanda Finance. And uh, we are the company responsible for positioning Rwanda as an international financial center. And we've called this international financial center Chigali International Financial Center. It has a vision of being a preferred financial center for international investments in Africa. We've been operational for three years now, we, and we are seeing tremendous progress. Amazing. We'll, we'll talk more about this uh, a little bit later in, in the show. And uh, Sopnendu, multiple hats, but today you just use one, right? Yes. Uh, today I'll be introducing uh, uh, the firm which I chair, uh, Elevandi, and um, this uh, Elevandi is a is a is an initiative, is a company, is a non-profit organization uh, which was uh, created out of uh, uh, four years of uh, experiment from uh, with MAS uh, on building a knowledge platform uh, which will allow global audience to convene, global stakeholders to convene and build uh, and share and create uh, interesting innovations and products for financial services. Um, And uh, today, with the origin of this company, Elevandi, uh, with the Singapore FinTech Festival as being the flagship product, today it has evolved to a much wider mandate. Uh, Today, uh, we have uh, three global footprint in our current uh, roadmap. We have uh, the Kigali uh, forum coming very very soon in month of June. Uh, then we have uh, uh, an Zurich uh, Point Zero forum, and in Singapore the Singapore FinTech Festival. Uh, what do we do with this kind of forum? We collect knowledge, we collect insights, we create what products, we create different uh, knowledge product and disseminate with all the stakeholders um, who, whose common objective is to digitize uh, global economy with responsible finance and uh, inclusive finance. And of course, a large part of our uh, effort goes in building the stakeholders, building the ecosystem from talent development to knowledge gathering to uh, creating synergy between public policymaker and uh, innovation happening in this space, and also finding breakthrough projects uh, uh, which can change financial sector uh, for the future. Thank you. So, you know, guys, uh, all good podcasts, uh, you know, start with the story. And I have one for this one as well. So if you remember, well, we were in Milan, both of us. It was October, October last year, you know, strolling in the park in the center. And we were talking about... Uh, you know, the global south, right? And how, 
you know, with Elevandi, inspired by the Singapore FinTech Festival, uh, you know, we should do something in Africa, right? And that's how the conversation started. And I've been fortunate enough uh, to, uh, in, like, uh, not only visit, but uh, doing work in Rwanda since 2016. And I said, listen, you know, I would do, I would do Kigali. That's how we started. And then uh, through the immediate conversation, uh, and this is where Nick, I would like you to step in. It almost uh, was an alignment of intent, right? Because we discovered that the Rwanda finance was and KFC were also planning uh, a, an event of this kind, you know, a global event uh, in the, in the country. And the two initiatives merge, merge together. So now Nick and Sop, uh, give me your side of the story, starting with Nick. Thank you, Matteo. It, 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 like you're saying that there are times when you just feel the stars are aligned. We've, as I mentioned, we've been operational for three years. And in those three years, we've tried to look at where our opportunities for in our international financial center. And one of those opportunities that we identified was fintech. How do we make Chigali International Financial Center a home for fintechs in Africa? Last year, we did an event in Dubai that had a lot of interest. And we're saying, look, we need to bring this on the continent. We are aware that there are several events about fintechs that happen globally, but so few do take place on the continent. And we started saying, look, how do we do this? Who are the right partners? So as uh, Kama would have it, I get Rwanda's high commissioner in Singapore sending me an email to introducing me to SOP and Elevandi. And here we are. SOP, your version of the story. I want to see if they coincide. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's somewhere between what uh, you said and Nick said. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm not doing for any particular reason. I, I always believed uh, Global South is not where you bring things, is where you discover good things. Uh, and uh, and large part of our original intent is to do a Global South uh, program, is to discover good ideas getting cultivated in markets where an existing financial services can be leapfrogged with very bold and creative ideas. So the original intent was actually to discover good ideas coming from Global South. Well, in that process, we kind of evolved with Nick's thought process and some of the other stakeholder uh, inputs we got that uh, why don't we bring both the discovery and sharing process uh, to the market? And that led to this inclusive impact forum. The inclusive here is not about inclusive in the sense uh, giving financial services to people who don't have access to inclusive in the th in the in the spirit of being inclusive in thought process because sometimes we 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 take a view that my idea is a better idea but in this particular uh, program which we co-designed with uh, Rwanda Finance is to be inclusive in our own thought process and uh, there's no uh, single good idea. And if we can find a way to blend all these good ideas coming from different market, the Global South is a fantastic test bed to actually try out. So the focus of uh, Kigali uh, event is actually a very unique focus globally, which I don't think anywhere in the world it has been uh, created because I consider myself a PhD in all these spaces. Uh, but I think the Kigali Forum has this unique characteristics where we only talk about how do you implement good ideas. And the good ideas can come from Global South, from Africa, from Latin America, from Asia, also can come from Europe. And how do we implement those good ideas in the real terms and finding that discovery, that or finding and discovering that pathway and using the Global South testbed as a way to showcase the feasibility of that idea. So that is essentially what brought all the uh, like-minded people to create this program, Inclusive uh, Fintech Forum. Uh, indeed, indeed, Sop, uh, I think that uh, very few events uh, in the continent today are events that can be called a global event that uh, happens to happen in Africa. You know, mm -hmm. and, and this is the, this is the Kigali, this is the Kigali Fintech Forum. This is what we want to build together. Uh, Nick, 
Rwanda finance is a pretty unique uh, um, context in the continent. Uh, and I call it uh, almost a Swiss knife, you know, where you have uh, different instruments, okay, to foster financial services innovation into instruments for funds to be settled, you know, instruments for startups to be incubated and find a fertile ground, instruments to coordinate the public and private sector, you know, so that KFC can become, you know, a, a great place for these different entities to collaborate. Can you give us a little bit of what's the recipe, you know, that, uh, that you put together, Nick? I think the, the recipe, Matteo, has been building on to what Rwanda has been doing over the last several years. One, you need to have stability because of perceptions of Africa not having stability. It's having rule of law. It's having regulators that are agile, that are able to work with international partners so that you are having... Uh, a legal framework that is transparent and compliant as per international norms. Those, I would say, are the building blocks. And then it's about seeking strategic partnerships, which is what we are doing here even for this uh, inclusive fintech forum, identifying partners such as Elevani to be able to say, you guys have been doing this for a while. How can we partner so that we can, we don't need to reinvent the wheel so an international financial center, as you know, Matteo, is to offer a platform to those with capital and those that have opportunities. And that's what Chigali International Financial Center is setting out to do. With that said, it's also being cognizant of where we see shifts, where do we see Rwanda and Africa going. And as mentioned, fintech, we strongly believe, is the future for Africa. We have a young, big population. We have characteristics of 90% plus of Africans who are unbanked or underbanked. And we believe that to achieve the development path that we have undertaken, we see fintech, inclusive fintech, playing a very critical role. That's one. Two, we believe that this needs to be done sustainably. So that's why we see sustainable finance and inclusive fintech being the path for not only Rwanda, but also for Africa. And we believe that Chigali International Financial Center, working with other network of international financial centers, have got a very strong role to play. And it has a, it is actually a great, uh, a great transition to talk a little bit about the content of, uh, of the conference, you know. So we have different pillars. Uh, and, uh, so you mentioned that the, the highlight, the, like the, the 10,000 feet of the content is, uh, we are going to talk about real stories of implementation that uh, change the life uh, of uh, underserved markets. Okay, in terms of uh, fintech innovation and in terms of how we can build a product for uh, the bottom billions, right? The bottom of the, of the, of the pyramid. Uh, we are going to talk about, you know, we have been building this agenda, uh, uh together for the past, uh, for the past few months. But uh, what could you mention as the two or three topics that excite you the most? I know at least one uh, Sopnendo that uh, will be one of your favorite. Uh, which is which is uh, the digital public good vertical, which is something uh, it, it's uh, it is actually a topic that uh, it is not very well uh, spoken about uh, in events that are not Davos uh, typically, and you wanted to bring uh, uh, this topic to Africa very strongly. I can see the reason why, and I would love you to share the other two. You can pick them up as you want. Sure. So let me uh, pick on the digital public infrastructure. Uh, as you rightly said, this kind of topics are typically uh, a topic which comes to multilateral development agencies, gatherings, whether it's World Bank, IMF, G20. Uh, so we thought, uh, Nick and myself thought that it is important that we should talk about the pragmatism of implementing such 
digital public infrastructure in the emerging uh, global south because essentially it is almost a prerequisite today if you want to be a leading uh, a center or a leading country which has adopted this, the power of digital economy to the maximum, you got to have the rails on which you have to ride on this opportunity. And to me, having an, a, a particular uh, or a set of rails, which is in, in which is now called digital public good or digital public infrastructure, uh, is almost a non-negotiable need for any country to think about their own digital economy adoption so for for us at the inclusive fintech forum we are going to talk not only about the need for digital public infrastructure which has been well debated in many multilateral forums the the, the differentiation in this particular forum is to talk about how do we implement such infrastructure what kind of cost structure we are talking what kind of tech stack to look at well, is it something we can afford to deploy in different countries with different income level? So, so there are this implementation issues, opportunities, pathway, which makes this particular topic interesting to be discussed in Kigali. On the other two topics, I would pick uh, perhaps the most difficult uh, product, uh, which has not uh, achieved it, uh, its status of innovation in terms of implementation is the micro uh, insurance and micro pension product, which I call broadly uh, financial security products, because you need very innovative, uh, creative uh, asset managers and uh, actuaries who can then come and build a product with a low premium for market which may not be able to afford a high premium insurance and pension product. To me, that's the second bucket. Again, we have picked up very challenging topic. We have picked up a very difficult subject uh, which will be discussed at an implementation level at the Kigali Forum. Now, the now those one and two leads to the per, uh, to a very niche area which will pick up at the Kigali uh, Inclusive Impact Forum, uh, FinTech Forum, is the inroad to talk about what are the alternate models we have to increase the capital market infrastructure for emerging market, and I don't believe. In many places, people discuss capital market infrastructure innovation, how to build alternate uh, bond market infrastructure, equity market infrastructure, private capital raising infrastructure, private equity structure. So there are a whole set of uh, capital market topics which will be picked up at the inclusive impact forum. And I, I, I think that makes Kigali forum a quite unique and when you compare against all the existing uh, programs around the world, when they talk about implementation level uh, products, uh, when it comes to comprehensive financial services, both serving the current need and the future need. Actually, so Matteo, building on to what Sop is saying, one of, in addition to what Sop is saying, the other one that really, really, really interests me is capital meets policy dialogue. I feel this is important, and let me tell you why. Africa has got all the ingredients needed to develop a robust fintech ecosystem, including a massive young unbanked population, but that is tech service. The miss missing ingredient has always been capital. So having a discussion around how we attract capital by putting in place necessary policy framework is very, very important. And that's why for me that is quite, quite exciting. The other yeah. for me that is equally exciting also that speaks to capital is the founder speak. As mentioned, we have a very entrepreneurial young population, not only in Rwanda, but across Africa. So being able to bring entrepreneurs, being able to bring those that are investing but that have also done, that have track record, interacting with our tech-savvy young population is a very too important platform that I'm very excited about and that I'm looking forward to. Very interesting. Uh, actually, first of all, is uh, an incredible assist, assist to uh, the Singapore FinTech Festival because uh, we sort of uh, 
uh, got inspired by these two formats, both the CMPD, the Capital Mid Policy Dialogue, and uh, the Founder Speak, uh, as uh, you know, two of the formats uh, that we are exporting uh, from from Singapore. And actually, thank you for mentioning it because, by the way, the Founder Speak is by far my favorite one because we are going to talk uh, about uh, is not a startup pitch. Is about the journey of uh, the entrepreneurs and their struggle that they had to build uh, the company that they have built. And, uh, and this is going to be extremely inspiring uh, for all these uh, young uh, entre African entrepreneurs uh, that are also going to benefit uh, from these uh, pitches that we are going to broadcast uh, even after the after after the show because uh, the entrepreneurship mentality the entrepreneurial mindset uh, it is something that uh, very often uh, is confused with uh, the goodwill you know and 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 very often uh, there is a lack of instruments to, to be able to understand uh, what does it mean to build a company what does it mean to build a team what does it mean to raise capital etc and uh, as a transition to this uh, I really hey, yeah, to... Matteo, Matteo, just before you transit, I want to tell your audience, Nick made a very interesting observation. In fact, I would say the capital mid policy dialogue, the original construct is getting enhanced in Kigali. I think I want to repeat to your audience a particular line what Nick said so that we don't for, we don't miss that. The original design of capital mid policy dialogue was to look for policy alignment to the capital being invested for the future of infrastructure, future of finance. The next uh, point in the Kigali, we have improved that construct to actually talk about how do we bring capital to a certain policy stance, which already exists in emerging market. To me, that's an improvement to what we had in Singapore. So this goes back to this whole idea that intellectual property is nobody's property. If it's shared globally, it gets better as partners come along and make it better. Absolutely. And, and I remember very, very well that we started at uh, Kigali's dimensions. We started with, uh, you know, a couple of thousand people, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, of course, in Singapore, it was, uh, and back in the days, uh, it, it was the novelty of, uh, of fintech, of course, to broad interest of big sponsors, and et cetera, et cetera. But then you really managed to scale this uh, into, the, into, the largest, uh, into the largest event of the, of the planet. You know, how do you think, uh, and this is a question for both, uh, because this is not a one-off event. This is something that we want to keep building and growing, and we want to become a reference in uh, in Africa. So, what do you think are the 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 key sort of challenges and uh, not to miss to be able to scale uh, this type of uh, gatherings? Okay. Well, uh, let me take this. Given uh, uh, then Nick can add to it. I see uh, this in four different legs of thinking today uh if i if i and this is 2024 i'm not talking 2023 and the reason i'm bringing 2024 to the discussion is because by the process i want to tell everybody kigali is a permanent place for for this particular program and uh, by 2024 we'll have four global hotspot which will kind of map out four di different opportunities and the uh, demand in the sector. The Zurich Forum in, 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 in Europe will be a very policy intensive forum, which will talk about policies in both from risk, opportunity, challenges around all the products and services in this sector. The Singapore FinTech Festival will largely celebrate and look at global innovation products, new ideas, macro pictures, all being blended into a single big construct called the digital economy. The Kigali one, in my mind, may surpa surpass, uh, if we do it in the right direction, uh, both uh, uh, the Singapore FinTech Festival in terms of size, because of one good reason, that it is an implementation-focused gathering. 
And from a global uh, opportunity perspective, the future GDP growth lies somewhere between Latin America, Africa, and Asia. And if you use GDP as the bench, as the, as the North Star of the future, I presume that the gathering will also follow the North Star of the size of the GDP where it's growing. So that's why I believe the Kigali Forum, which is a global South Forum, will actually surpass in terms of global gathering in this space. And the fourth leg, which is not in this discussion, is what you're what thinking in somewhere in Latin America, perhaps Brazil, is to talk about the global trade finance. So if I map all the four, there's a trade finance happening in Latin America, there is policy happening in Zurich, there is a global south implementation, the future GDP market happening in Kigali, and the macro picture happening in, 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 in Singapore. And all are connected, all have a connection to each other. Together, these four centers will be the single largest network of people coming together for the same cause, but four different objectives. Now, building on to what Sopa said, Matteo, is important to note that I strongly believe that the opportunity ahead for fintech in Africa is very clear. Today, roughly 90% of payments are still being made using cash. More than half of all Africans are unbanked or underbanked, and only a small minority hold debit or credit cards. Now, while we recognize that Africa is an emerging market and economic and political risks remain, I strongly believe that Africa offers one of the greatest long-term growth opportunities for fintechs. So I see this, if we leverage Rwanda's current assets, Rwanda last year successfully held the Commonwealth Heads of State Forum. Early this year, we are holding the FIFA Congress. I believe Rwanda as, as a destination has that convening power. So, and that's why I keep going back to the ability to identify strategic partnership, which is what Elevandi is bringing on board. I believe as a continent, the opportunity is there. We've identified a host country that has demonstrable track record. We have a strategic partner that has demonstrable track record of convening and hosting these kind of forums. So I believe we have the ingredients in place. If we are able to bring together, and which I have no doubt we will, heads of state, policymakers from governors to ministers of finance to ministers of ICT to those with capital and those with the ideas, I feel we will have a very successful forum. Indeed. And actually, I think that uh, we, we gave to our auditors uh, a pretty complete uh, view of the, of the agenda, the topics, the format. Uh, there is one sort of population left to talk about, uh, which is fundamental. Nick, you mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, m maybe not all of us, uh, know well, but, uh, you know, Africa is by far the youngest continent on, on average. And we wanted at the Kigali FinTech Forum, uh, the inclusive FinTech Forum to, uh, have a focus on students and academia and and learning and talent so we have actually a track dedicated to this so give us a little bit of a highlight of uh, because we have been inspired by uh, the the different initiatives that you have done at the singapore fintech festival and uh, how we are going to implement uh, some of it but with the intention to scale uh, in kigali as well well, this is this question is on the talent development, right? Um, uh, you know, just taking a step back, uh, because I always believe the forums we have designed and one in uh, Kigali with partnership with the Nick and his team, uh, we always think of stakeholders. What is there for stakeholders? And out of the four stakeholders, which is the investor, policymakers, entrepreneurs themselves. The fourth stakeholder is the resources, which is human resources. 
And if you don't talk uh, about human resources in, in this forum, you actually miss a significant portion of the discussion, uh, critical uh, uh, implementation factor. So given human resource is part of this design of future of finance, uh, the common goal which we have set up with, with uh, Rwanda Finance is how do we impact uh, learning uh, within the forum uh, through workshops and uh, through uh, roundtables and inviting uh, students, academics to the forum. Also, we, have, we are in the process of designing uh, uh, a program, a certificate program, uh, which we will deliver in partnership with a very credible institution in Singapore and in Africa uh, to students who are willing to get a first-hand information on certain certain areas of financial sector, which will define the future of finance. So both uh, as a, in a kind of a uh, very, very customized formal way and also through an interactive, uh, highly engaged way at the forum, a combination of that will be how we are going to focus on the talent piece. Having said that, what happens typically after the event is done, we do pick up some thread of work and we will pursue those opportunity with the local ecosystem and the broader ecosystem to see whether we can implement and enhance some of the products which we're thinking as we move along. Adding on to what Soap is saying, Mateo, is let's take advantage, and that's what we are hoping to do with, with, this, with this forum. Rwanda is host the largest incubation center in Africa, Nosken. Rwanda is host to Carnegie Mellon. Rwanda is host to African Leadership University. And these are infrastructures that have been made, not only targeting at Rwandans, but across to Africans, the African youth in general. So what better way for having an inclusive fintech forum that is able to tap into this latent talent that is eager, that is entrepreneurial, with, with, with different themes such as the Careers Forum. Just to give an example, the founders speak that we are talking about. I feel this is very, very important, and this is what makes this forum inclusive. It's not something that is only meant for heads of state, for policymakers, for those with capital. It's also to be able to bring in Africa's biggest asset, which is its youth and ensure that it's it's involved in the present rather than just looking at the future. Nick, thank you very much. And I think these will be the final uh, beautiful words uh, to end up uh, this, uh, this podcast. Uh, there are uh, plenty of things we have not talked about. We might have another episode. We didn't talk about uh, what's going to be the Kigali Manifesto, which is the report uh, coming out uh, from this event. Or, uh, you know, to my friend Jal from Elevandi organizing uh, the roundtables, which are a part of this event, but they are more like small gatherings, uh, you know, with a definite goal, build up with partners, uh, invitation only. So the format uh, of uh, the Inclusive FinTech Forum is actually very rich. We have been repeating the name of the event very much. So if now uh, the inclusive fintech forum.com is not in your mind, uh, it's about time you go on the web uh, and check it out. The agenda is there, a few speakers uh, I've already announced, uh, and you can start uh, uh, subscribing. So, Nick, thank you very much uh, for being with us. And uh, I look forward uh, to keep building this amazing event. Th thank you, Matteo. Very, very excited you. about this upcoming event. And uh, as, as Rwanda Finance and Rwanda as the host country, we are we on countdown. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for everything. And uh, we're all looking forward to a great gathering of very inclusive mind, open to ideas and open to sharing with the rest of the world. 20 to 22nd of June, Inclusive Fintech Forum, inclusivefintechforum.com. That's Breaking Banks Europe, and it's a wrap. Thanks for listening to Breaking Banks Europe, a Provoke Media podcast in cooperation with Fintech Stage. Don't forget to tweet us out, shout out, or post to the team at Breaking Banks EU on Twitter. If there's something or someone you'd like to hear on our cast, let us know. 
See you next week on Breaking Banks Europe.